Hi, I'm Shakti Durga. Welcome to the Goddess Speaks podcast. This is a collection of discourses from the ancient goddess Artha containing spiritual energy and activations and discussions of those discourses. I hope that the teachings are beneficial to you on your personal journey of enlightenment. So let's have a look at what Arthur was sharing with us on the last occasion. We were taken to a place on the sun where there was the huge tree. I think we've been there a couple of times now. So she starts off by talking about the tree to which we were taken on the sun. Namaste and welcome back to this place of gathering. This place lives in the archetypal memories of your race. And the sacred tree appears throughout the cultures of the world as an expression of divine energy, human hope and development. It's a symbol of growth. It's a symbol of knowing that our roots are really in another place. It's a symbol that's understood by people depending upon their level of conscious evolution in a variety of different ways. And even in your own life and even within one hour, you may discover several different levels of meaning for the holy tree. But Arthur says it's a vehicle and a vehicle implies movement. And that movement is vibrational and dimensional. And that we here together, as in all of us in this class, by doing this work together, are creating a dimension that's in our own image. And as we come together to create this dimension, that which plays out within it holds all of the potentials and all the codes of light that have developed within the hearts and souls of each of us. And as we progress in the unfolding of the plan for the evolution of our souls, we come into contact with beings on the inner plane who were previously beyond our capacity to connect with because their frequency emitted at a higher vibrational pitch and couldn't be reached within the recesses of our activated consciousness beyond a mere murmur present in the subconscious part of our being, but to which expression could not be given. Wow, hey? As each of us has lightened our load over time and we've been contemplating, changing, growing, developing and refining, Ma Kundalini has flowed more liberally throughout our being. Our capacity to hear the great beings at a different turn of the spirals become enhanced. And here with us today are some of the guides with whom we have a familiarity by now because they've been traveling with us for some time. But as of last time we got together and did this class, Arthur told us that we were being joined by some new guides and that these are holders of the Dharmic keys. These guides are coming to join with us in the final ascent towards Moksha. So this is all very interesting. And you might recall that the the week before, We had quite a teaching from Arthur on Dharma and she told us that there'd be a lot more teachings coming. And so it's, I guess, not surprising that a whole group of new guides are coming in to accompany us on that part of the journey. Then she spoke about moksha and said, if you think of moksha as a mountain, then you need special equipment for mountaineering as opposed to walking that even when you walk in hilly terrain, it's a different exercise to mountaineering. And the tools that you have thus far, all of us, and the level of spiritual fitness that we've attained is necessary and has been developed in the hearts and souls of each of us. And our chakras are capable of making the ascent because we've attained to a level of altitudinal stability on the climb up the perennial mountain. So I just love the way Arthur phrases things, you know, the up the perennial mountain, just so beautiful, I think. Just as it was expressed last week, it was expressed that the top of the waterfall has no top. It has no beginning and nor does the spiritual mountain ever cease to unfold itself before your consciousness. But mountaineering skills are needed now and thus we enter into the fields of the Dharmic Lords 
and the souls who have neared completion of their own evolutionary and creative journey. And the nearing of the end does not imply tiredness or the usual decrepitude that's associated with ageing. Arthur says there's great vigour in this place, in this dimensional place. These manifold dimensions of divine grace hold great vigour. And if you've met any of the immortals or seen the immortals or read anything about immortals, they're vigorous. They're hundreds of years old, but they have so much energy. And so I don't believe that it's just the dimension that is vigorous. I think there is the potential for invigoration for all of us, regardless of our chronological age at which time we enter into these high mysteries. So that's a bit of excitement, isn't it? So there's great vigour in this place, in this dimension, and these manifold dimensions of divine grace. The places where the souls of those who are close to the attainment of moksha, where they reside, could be seen as a series of heavenly realms, and each is assigned a place in the heavenly realm that most closely fits the personality, the consciousness, and the preferences of the spiritual adherent. It's breathtaking to perceive the kindness of the divine in the provision of that which suits us. It's just always about, well, what would make you happy? What would suit you? Where would you feel comfortable? And this is what Jesus said, it's what he meant when he said that the realm of the divine contains many mansions. His father's house contains many mansions is, I think, what he said. The home of the Lord contains many mansions, is many mansions, and that Jesus would prepare a mansion for his followers, for each of them in the realm in which Lord Jesus could be found. And there are many mansions, and you might think, says Arthur, of these mansions as dimensions rather than houses. But if it's more pleasing to your countenance, by all means, you can construct a house in the dimension to which you have the karmic liberty to live. There's a thought to conjure with, literally. Breathing in from above and out through the back of your body, and she was just gathering us up. She said, don't labour over the meaning of the teachings, but instead assent to their awakening within you. Wow. So don't labour mentally over the meaning of the teachings. Just consent to the teachings waking up within you. And allow yourself to listen instead to the voice of your soul and your heart, which always have that voice within them and which will guide you on your way. So that's very fascinating, isn't it? Just awaken to the teachings. You don't have to think about it too much. So it's really taking us to a deeper level of being. And then Arthur said, there are no souls who attain to self-realization that have avoided making mistakes on the path. How reassuring is that? Although souls abound who have deferred their learning by avoidance of situations that they really need to face so as to bring to a head the classroom in which they find themselves. One can defer learning for a long time, and this is the ego's preference because the ego is uncertain of what happens once we bring things to a head. You can't control or contain the circumstances thereafter. To know what's going to happen. But the journey is one of heart and soul, not of control. And it's courage that is Arthur's gift to us today. And Arthur says, Our sister, the goddess Madurga, has devoted herself to bringing forth the courage within the hearts of humanity to give the strength that each needs for mountain climbing, even for walking in the world at any vibrational level. You need that courage and strength. Back to Arthur, she says, It's advised, beloved ones, that you continue the daily recitation of the mantras of the goddess of strength and courage. For there is a light field associated with every god or goddess, replete with gifts and codes of light. And those of Madurga are extraordinary, as are all the gods in their own way. One day, says Arthur, I will introduce you to Lord Dharma himself, but not on this day 
for Lord Dharma tends to present himself in myriad disguises, similar to the great sage Narada, who would come as a trickster to bring forth lessons and learning. And thus at this stage it will be easier for you to focus upon Mother Durga and the ineffable Lord Ganesha. Stability, says Arthur, is the friend of the ego and pretty irrelevant to your soul. But this group is unusual in the extent to which you are prepared to engage with the difficult task of self-love and compassion by which your ego becomes a refined vehicle. But remember, beloved ones, that it is still a problem child from time to time and that its voice will always be the voice of control over, security, stability, winning, and being right. Always will this voice issue forth from the ego, and it takes great discernment to rise above it. But the refinement of the ego lends stability to the ascent up the spiritual mountain, and little by little, once reliance upon that flimsy vehicle can be relinquished as you surrender the lesser for the greater vehicle of the higher soul. It's a managed ascent beloved ones, as it is in any mystery school. But the love with which you deport yourselves is bringing forth much attention in the spiritual hierarchy, and each and every one of you is surrounded by an enthusiastic team of supporters, and thus you need never feel alone. If the scourge of loneliness touch your heart and mind, go within and look around you and see the exalted company that you keep and know that you're not alone. Mother Arthur blesses you and your families and your lives and your path. Namaste. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Goddess Speaks. If so, please share it with your friends and your family so they can benefit too. If you'd like to connect with me, visit my website, shaktidurga.com.